Oh, the right to vote. The right to vote covers all of it. If you don't have the right to vote and the right to pick the people who make the policy, the public policy will always be against you. Everything revolves around public policy. Uh, I think Chairman Mao once said all political power comes from the barrel of a gun. Well, here it comes from the ballot box. And without the ballot box, you lose it all. Uh, ending gun violence. Um, I had a friend of mine, her uh, son was gunned down uh, in the streets of Chicago. There is no justice, no, no one can find who actually uh, killed her son. Um, and we have to take the guns off the street. I feel that, you know, especially with our youth uh, in our communities, uh, we definitely need to get a better handle on that situation because uh, it's affecting our community more than any other communities. You know, the kids killing kids, and the kids in Chicago, like, they, 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 they have no hope for, to live. So, I mean, you know, gun violence is a number one priority for me. Closing the racial wealth gap. I have acknowledged the fact that there are certain races that are, are doing more and being mistreated and not being paid properly. And uh, that should not be the case. You know, we should all have a, an opportunity to make fair wages and um, the, the right amount of wages based on the type of work that we you know, put out there. My number one issue probably is disparity and the racial question for the country, because when that falls apart, all of the other issues also fall apart. And there's clearly a divide, a racial divide that's getting wider and wider and wider, which affects our economics, which affects our security, which affects our education and the ability to tap into resources that should be available to every single American. It's criminal justice reform because I feel like so many African Americans, especially African American males, have been wrongly accused of crimes and serving uh, an excessive amount of time for, for minimal uh, offenses. And I would like to see that criminal justice reform restructured uh, uh, to uh, not cater to minimal sentences, but at least decrease the number of sentences, uh, the number of years that a young black man is serving in prison for minimal crimes. Now, criminal justice reform is something else that I'm very passionate about because our kids are being criminalized from the time that they're very young. The, the, prison to, 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 um, the school to prison pipeline is, is something that's killing us. Uh, a lot of our males are in jail and it's proper education, again, funding and proper education for our people will make a huge difference in the future for us. So, Then we need to find a way to reintegrate those men back into the society, back into the family, because we do better as a, when we start with the family unit and grow from there. So I think America owes it to our black and brown people, especially, like I said, our men, to reform it and reintegrate them into our society. Other issue that everybody talks about uh, reparations. Me per se, um, if you rep reparations may be you know a way to go, but me personally, I don't think it is because if you educate the kids, right, the gap between the wealth and the poor, you know, the white and black. Wealth, welfare gap will it'll diminish. And education is the key to success. Education is the key to having a better and higher paying job. And we'll be able to close those gaps if we can get our leaders to put more money and funding into public education. And also public higher education, because as we know, uh, black women are the most educated segment of our nation, and that comes through higher education. I believe that we invest in education, particularly at an early age, we see the benefits in, for years to come. When we look at all the cuts and the discussions uh, about cuts to health care, both early education and higher education, one needs to be alarmed in terms of what's happening in our country. Jobs with living wages. The fight for 15 is important. You know, our young people, we need to make sure they are starting at a good wage level so they can be more productive citizens and get them out of the poverty. As part of the LGBT community, I noted that that wasn't included, and I'm, that's a big thing for me. And given what's going on now with number 45, 
and everything that he's doing against us, and I mean as a whole, not just the LGBT, but as a whole, women's rights. I mean, I, I just recently told a friend of mine, it looks like we're going back in time uh, to when women didn't have rights. LGBT people were still in the closet and didn't dare step out of that. Well, my number one issue right now is for everyone to have equal rights and justice and equal qual equality within this time. Because there shouldn't be no one being underrepresented under this constitution. Why some people is being represented and some is not being represented. Then now we know we have a big problem. My number one issue is jobs with living wages. And a part of that being the fact that they're trying to get rid of unions, and we know unions is where there's good jobs with living wages. Some of the important issues for me is climate control. Sometimes we don't think about the, how that affects us as a people. Um, also, the issues on health care, that's a big one, including Medicare information. That is also a priority for me. So I look at those things and that is how I try to make my decision about who I'm going to vote for. One of my concerns is um, Medicare or Social Security. I, I, I say that because of my mom, you know, taking her to the doctor, you know, the Social Security, it pays for part of her um, health benefits, but it don't pay for everything. And like when she has to get med medications, because she's an asthmatic, you know, the medication courses, and they tell you one minute you're paying for it, and next minute, next year, the following year, you have to pay more. You know, so that's, I, that's the part that I'm really big on, because I, I, I believe every senior citizen or every person that has Medicare, they shouldn't even have to pay for medicine, because they did their time. One of my issues is I hope that um, they give everybody Medicaid and um, make sure that our Social Security is, is around and our pension is around when we retire, because some, some of us are young and not ready to go. And I just hope that you know, uh, we can work on that, keeping that intact. We need to have somebody in there that's going to really do us some justice, really put us in a place where we can all be a family together, work together, and do the right things meaning that we need our Social Security done right, our health done right. I work for the health hospital division, and it's very hard, very hard for us to move forward because he's not looking at us as a black family. He's just looking at us as like a spot. And I appreciate, I appreciate the way we're moving right now with CBTU. I am very happy to be a part of this. As a Canadian, we have the, the privilege of having uh, our health care covered uh, entirely, for the most part anyways, and I think that you know, families and, and, and folks, especially in our community, shouldn't have to worry about um, the decision to put food on their table or take care of their medical bills. And so if there was Medicare for all, um, we'd have a healthier community, we'd have a healthier society, and people would be able to go out and um, maintain a living that's a, a, at a high standard. I would say one thing that's really dear to my heart is really kind of retirement and security. While I know I'm not at the age right now, but I'm to retire, say, maybe in the next 10 years. And the way I see it now is that a lot of things in retirement is, is, is not happening as what we will like it to be, meaning pensions and things of that nature are not um, in a way fashion that it should be. You know, you're having to retire later versus earlier. We've done our part. Uh, we paid into the pension system. We put the years of service in, doing a job that most can't do. And now they're trying to tell us that it's not going to be available for us because they didn't do their job. So it's time to hold them, hold them accountable about, you know, the fact that when it comes to pensions, it was, a, it was not, it was a promise to us. It's not something that they told us we, we might get. It was something that was told us it was a condition of our employment. Being a condition of our employment, we have a right to it. And that's what we're going to fight for. I'm from Canada, and, but everything trickles north. So whatever is happening in the U.S. trickles north. And we already see you guys have a 45 who's special, and we now have a Doug Ford in Ontario who's equally special. So you know we want to make sure that things are going right in your country because it, it's a very influential country. It influences a lot of other groups. The rise of hate groups in your country has led to a rise of hate group in our country. And so we are intertwined within the struggle. That's why we all 
participate so much in CBTU as well to let you know that struggle is from one voice as Cleola had said earlier today.